welcome back to wait 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 Bria T episode eight take one I know where my clapper is but I don't feel like reaching for it it's right there as you can see we're relaxed today no makeup none whatsoever just moisturizing and no cute top this is a 2015 was how long ago five five years ago I thought it was longer this is a five-year-old sweatshirt from high school. I'm in raggedy leggings because today's video is much different than every video we have done so far since the first seven. This video is going to be, as you can tell from the title, a walkthrough of a studio that has no space or little space with no money or little money on a college student budget studio. And the title is hella long and complex, but basically someone had asked on Instagram after last week's episode of me giving 10 tips on how to be a filmmaker without the film resources, film school resources, and they had asked what my studio setup looked like and what kind of equipment I had used. And I was like, well, what studio are you talking about, sis? Because like, I ain't got no fucking studio. <laughs> then I realized that like, I kind of do. And what other way than to preach you know do what I preach about finding affordable equipment and making do with what you have as a creative when you're just out of, of, of the gate then show you guys what I do so I thought this video instead of just talking to a camera for 30 minutes I would walk you through how I turn basically no space into a studio setup and the equipment I use on set and in studio that is affordable accessible and how long and how durable it is and what problems I've run into and just so you guys can get a view on how I am as a filmmaker and a creative and what I do to navigate the lack of resources I may face when it comes to my career so without further ado let's get into it okay so hopefully my head's not getting cut off but I really don't feel like trying to figure like where to place my camera so this is a very small space like from the tip of my fingers is just how much room I have to work with and it can be kind of irritating but I've navigated having basically no space or a small space to set up a studio so you can record and edit your videos and program and just make your creative space a little bit more of you. I'm working in a very like I said very very small compact space like there is a couch like right here and then my TV stand is right here so I really have no room to really work. Um, so this is how we're going to make our magic. So I got a lot of cool stuff that I'm adding to my no space, small space, um, college student budget studio and I'm really excited. So the first thing that I decided to buy to spruce up the back is these, hmm, yeah. So we're going to do these things in a different order and then so while you see me set up and i explain some of the things i purchased i'm also going to do a voiceover and show you guys some other interesting um products that i've purchased for a traveling studio when i go out and i film on sets outside of my place and so you can get a kind of idea of what my equipment as overall of a low budget filmmaker kind of looks like as an in studio and an on set okay so first I got some pretty cool rugs from Amazon and I'm just going to spruce up this. So if you guys aren't aware, the main colors are lavender and peach. Um, lavender because it's my grandmother's birthstone and peach is because it's my mom's favorite color and those are the two most important women in my life and this is my small tribute to them and all of the support they've given me. And lavender and purple, anything purple is my favorite color um, okay so since I got that going on and I'm kind of just giving it a blase look it's just really to add color I'm going in and I decided to purchase this panel wall thing um, it's like a dress. It's called like a dressing pattern on Amazon panel on Amazon. I got this because I got really tired of using a green screen. I realized that using a green screen for me 
it would work best if I had a camera that I could chroma key instead of chroma keying and editing just because again I'm a really low budget studio and sometimes green screens especially when it's through my hair you can still see green spots and it doesn't really eliminate it all that well and you can kind of tell it's a green screen it's just really weird one person though I really admire is my friend Tiffany and she's an amazing creative she's been in the game a lot longer than I have and if you watch her videos if you're especially if you're into beauty her backgrounds are like flawless and I can't tell if it's a physical background or it's a green screen so not to Tiffany but I'm not there yet so I brought this panel and I kind of just maneuver it and take a step back So this is how I kind of like it. It gives a contrast of color because the wall and the mantle are both white. So it just gives a contrast of color. And so that's what I do. And then um, tip is this is how I set it up when I'm just recording a Breezy TV or a Breeze Cameras and Curls video. But if I am to do an in-house um, interview for a documentary or film I'm shooting, this really comes in handy because whoo, you can kind of just get an interesting pattern background and eliminating kind of the other things that really won't sit well with the mood of your tone because not everybody's going to appreciate my fur rug decoration. So getting a panel like this because I can't fit a backdrop stand in this small corner allows for it to be seamless and of course I take it you know the rugs from the back so you really can't see anything like that um, yeah. okay so then moving on to okay so moving on I have oh, okay. so moving on I have my director's chair this is a chair I use um this chair is also from Amazon this was about 60 bucks um, I splurged on the chair because I've always wanted a director's chair and it's purple and purple is my favorite color but also because it folds up and I was looking for a foldable chair in this space anything that can fold like my wall panel and my chair is absolutely a time saver and it's a space saver too so my advice for a low budget um filmmaker or creative who's trying to make a studio look into things that are foldable a foldable table foldable desk something that can lift up something that you can tuck away out of sight out of mind especially if you're using a space that other people are going to be in when you're not recording it's kind of just nice and it protects your things when no one's like touching them because they're in the way so got my director chair and i just you know pop it right here so more so for technical things we're going to move on to the equipment that I use when I'm in my studio and doing all of that. So moving on, we have lights. So this is the stand I'll be using. I'm actually gonna tuck up my chair um, and place that right there, just so you guys can see. So I have this stand. I got a three piece light kit um, with like soft box ish vibes going on from Amazon and it was about 60 bucks and in the pack you get lights so it comes with there's three of these you know three lamps it came with three stands and it also came with an extender stand so I can have a light leaning um overhead and the best part is it also comes with um light bulbs so what I would do is open it up and I think it's like I think this is really neat because it's actually really neat for traveling and I take I do take these lights when I go off set and I'm in another space um like another apartment or another building an office and these are really small they're compact and the light bulbs are pretty bright so you just insert the light bulb like 
So, okay. And then, last but not least, you have your light diffuser. You're kind of like, creates a soft box light. Now, this is 60 bucks and you get three. It's a really great steal, but please keep in mind that these are not like industrial set lights. So when you're location scouting or you are trying to figure out what's best, like even when I'm in my own place using these lights, um, sometimes the lights are not bright enough or they're not casting like the best shadow and you have to manipulate it keep that in mind because these are affordable like off amazon um products now there are also lights on b and h if you don't know about b and h and you're a video creator please jump on that b and h is just a website and they have a brick and mortar in new york and it's just a store that has so much equipment for videographers, cinematographers, video creatives, digital creatives. They have like from backdrops to lights to, excuse me, to monitors, which I'm purchasing soon so I can watch myself. Right now I'm guessing blindly. They have stands, they have rigs, they have audio, they have cameras, lenses, they have it all in a convenient space. And sometimes it's much more affordable than going to like Best Buy or like even Amazon sometimes finding that equipment. And it's much more trustworthy because you know everyone who's writing a review there is a serious like videographer or cinematographer who's like taking their craft seriously so they're reviewing the products honestly and genuinely so you know what you're getting. Um, yeah, so check that out. So this is the softbox. So I actually have one plugged in. And there is a switch right here. And that's where it can get kind of irritating is that the switches are actually on the lamp itself. But you can just switch it on and let there be light. Um, a little thing also about this is these heat up, but they're not as hot as like I said, a real like production light that you would use in a studio setting or a high-end set. Um, so I still would suggest wearing gloves to take the light bulbs out if you're traveling, but since I kind of just set up and go, and once my setup in my home is set up, I kind of don't break down my lights and I let them cool down. But no matter what, whether it's a affordable light or a high-end light, always let your light bulb cool down. Do not touch it with your bare hands. And always use gloves when handling. And give it 10 minutes after turning it off before handling it again. So those are my lights. And then I got other cool stuff that I'm just going to start setting up my studio to how I like it. And then while you see me do that, I'm going to just throw in some other equipment that I use on set when I touch the extending arm to the light set that I got. And so this, so like I said, it comes with three stands three lights, three lamps, three light bulbs, three soft covers, and it also comes with this arm. This is an extending arm where you can have a light overhead of your interviewee or yourself. Um, in this case, it's myself when it's in my own studio. And so, as you can see, I just attached the lamp to the extending arm. And I should break this down, but I don't feel like it. So I'm just going to attach this part not don't worry about this it can kind of get confusing this right here to the stand and you just tighten it and so as you can see as as affordable as this like lamp is is that these lights are um it's very lightweight, which is nice for traveling when you don't have an extensive crew and you're just on your own like myself. So I carry all of my equipment on top of being producer and director and all that jazz. And so I got affordable equipment, obviously, but with affordable equipment, you get really unsteady lights. And so sandbags, investing in sandbags are completely necessary. 
make sure you have a sandbag or at least a way to secure this especially when you're interviewing somebody else the last thing you want to happen is that it hits your subject and then they don't take you seriously ever again because you just abuse them so that's how you attach the overhead arm for this light it can be very very high um you can maneuver the arch of it the extent uh, like the extending portion of it you can maneuver everything just make sure you get a suitable sandbag you can only you only need a small one because it's really just like it just needs like a pound or two of pressure to keep it settled but always have a sandbag on hands and it can be really annoying so make sure you have a sandbag so since we're on the topic of lighting i wanted to show another lighting piece that i got this is kind of i forgot the title because i don't have it with me right now this is kind of like a ring light it's a ring flash but it doesn't need to be a flash it's usually used just for photography it's like a quick flash when you're taking a picture but um you can also use it for continuous light when you're filming and i use it sometimes because like i said the lights that i do have while they're affordable and it came with light bulbs the light bulbs aren't always the brightest especially when you live in the east coast and lighting changes natural lighting changes all the time so i use this to control more of the light and so um it was pretty affordable i think it was like 20 bucks and you just turn it on and it shows you if it's on flash or on light so you want to press light and you get a ring light and it just sits on your lens like this and this piece slides into where you would have the audio so you would need to figure out where to place your mic i usually have a mic off camera not attached to my camera and recording on my laptop so i can just sync that audio up depending on how loud i am or what i really need so i can put this piece let me turn it off i can put this piece on the top of my camera where the mic would usually sit and just prop this open and then it comes with filters it's a blue filter a yellow filter and two white filters to kind of filter out what kind of light you need sometimes to help balance out the white light that comes out of my three lamps i use a yellow filter and you can also control how bright you want the light to be i probably should have showed that um so it can be really dull or it can be extremely bright and so with the filters it helps filter out what kind of color you need and it's better than using it now instead of doing it on post so that's another picture i have there are a few mics that I use on hands all the time whether I'm in studio or out of studio and starting with a shotgun mic that I got from Amazon for about 40 bucks it is an amazing shotgun mic it picks up great audio and it works with many different cameras whether you have a Sony or a Nikon or a Canon it works for all of them and it even works for an iPhone and Samsung um, so yeah just make sure with this um, shotgun mic you check the jack port to see if it's big enough that's one thing that people didn't realize but that's for 40 bucks then I have um, a table mic and it's kind of like a conference desktop microphone I like to use this when I'm picking up um, room noise or gnat sound when I'm filming especially because there are certain sounds that could make for great great sound bites when you're editing and you didn't really pick it up when you were all actually filming so i like using that i got that for about 23 dollars, and it works really well with the mac and if you just hook it up with audition it sounds beautiful i also use that when i don't really have a mic um when i'm filming my own stuff next is obviously a lavalier mic you always need to have a great lavalier mic and i like one that can be used on my phone or my camera or any other recorder i have and i got this one and it's about 18 dollars on amazon as well and last but not least for audio i have a digital voice recorder and it's 32 gigabytes it's actually really amazing um and it's about $34 so it's kind of pricey but other audio recorders are extremely high up there in price so this one is actually a really good steal and I like to use this when again I'm trying to catch a room noise or I'm afraid that my lavalier is having too much interference and I might just have to pick up a different sound um, basically I take all four mics with me 
when I'm filming um, on set somewhere else because you can never have enough back backup for audio. So there are going to be some times when you're on set and you need to control your scenery. Sometimes location scouting just fell through and your scenery is just not the vibe for your film. And that's when it comes in handy to have a backdrop, um, a portable backdrop with a backdrop stand. And usually that's, that backdrop can be a green screen or white. You can chroma key a different um, picture in it. But the backdrop stand is actually really, really important. And I got this one. It's an adjustable 10-foot backdrop um, stand. And it has a crossbar kit and a carrying bag. And I got it for about $33, which is really affordable because it's 10 feet by 6.5 feet. And I've learned that it's actually pretty tall um, in person, like, to the point where you are working with a great amount of room depending no matter how tall or short your interview subject is another thing that i take with me every time i go on a set or i'm outside filming from a controlled location i use this dream grip evolution universal transformer rig um it's about 190 so it's kind of pricey it's something i definitely saved up for um, the beauty is that you can mount two to two different cameras on the same rig. As you can see, they have two iPhones. You can switch out the iPhones for two DSLR cameras, um, a photography camera, like a point and shoot camera and a DSLR camera. It comes with LED lights and it also comes with a microphone. Um, the microphone doesn't really work well with DSLR cameras. It works extremely well for an iPhone. Um, and it also comes with lenses that help focus the your iPhone lens on how to zoom in and, you know, focus on your set. It's actually pretty lightweight. It's actually not heavy at all. And it's really easy to assemble and to break down. Um, and it comes with the iPhone grips to hold your camera, um, your, your iPhones, obviously, or your smartphones. So like 190 it was actually a really great price. I absolutely love taking it with me everywhere I go. I got it for 180 so they did hike up the price, but that's also because when I was getting it, it was sold out super quickly, so they obviously learned their price range. And last but not least, um, how I travel, like the traveling bag I have, I have this Caden DSLR camera backpack, and it has a laptop compartment for a 14-inch laptop. Um, it's absolutely amazing. It's waterproof. It has a, as you can see, a side where you can pull out and store like lenses and your actual camera. It has sides for pocket, like it has pockets for your iPhone or your phone. And it's just a really great bag. It's extremely durable. And when I go on set, I'm always carrying this bag. Because like I said, it's waterproof. And at the bottom, you can't see right now, it has a tripod holder where you can just like clip in your tripod and move on, which really comes in handy. So my hands are free to carry the duffel bag that I have with the rest of my stuff. And I just really love this backpack. I got it for about $36, which was really, really amazing. And it's a bag that is worth its money. Okay, guys, so that's it for this episode of Brie T TV. As always, I'm your girl, Brie T. And I hope you guys enjoyed kind of walking into my world as a creative and my creative space. Um, sometimes a creative space is extremely personal. And a lot of people don't want to show it. But I felt like it could be encouraging for others to see that I have very, very limited resources and accessibility at this point. But it's not letting it's I'm not letting it stop me. I know that right now this level is I'm using all of my resources at my disposal, all the accessibility at my disposal, and I'm trying my best every single day to be the best creative and filmmaker I can. And I know that continuing to use everything to the full extent is gonna help me reach the next level of my career and the next level of accessibility and resources that would allow me to just flourish in my career. And yeah, just, you know, Keep in mind that the space, the accessibility, the resources you have right now are not forever. Just use them to your best advantage. Keep grinding, keep working hard, keep using it, but also take time for yourself because we always love mental health and taking care of yourself before running yourself into the ground. But also just be appreciative of the resources you have. Acknowledge them and know that it's only temporary. Your work is going to matter. Your work is going to carry you because you put in that effort. I'm not ashamed that I really have no space to work with, but I'm actually happy with what I can do 
with the amount of resources that I have. And yeah, I'm excited to see where my film takes me and where this takes me and where everything else is. So that's what I use and that's my equipment and that's really what's in my bag of tricks. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys come back for next week's video at Saturday at 8 p.m. Um, with that being said, make sure you follow us on Instagram at brit.tv com <laughs> that's brit.tv com um just so you can get some updates i am starting a new film and my schedule may flip and flop when it comes to brit tv i'm going to stay as consistent as possible but if you're a filmmaker you know that when you're getting an interview and it's an interview that you desperately need that interview has to be scheduled whenever that person is available and you have to make adjustments here or there so just letting you know, if you follow us on Instagram, you'll be the first to be updated. And this week, I'm actually finally getting around to sprucing up the website and revamping that, where all the contact information will be up on there as well. And again, if you follow us on Instagram, you'll be the first to know when updates are made. So, I'm going to stop talking. Have, a guy, have yourself a fantastic weekend, an amazing week, and I will see you next week at Saturday at 8 p.m.